fateful events of December 18th that caused tonight's bout. On December 17, 1993, in Tucumán, Argentina, number five rank Edgar Gonzalez met WBA junior welterweight champion and Argentina's most beloved hero, Juan Koji, in notably one of the most controversial title fights of the year. The controversy began midway through the second round. Gonzalez landed a big right hook to Koji's chin. He lost his legs and fell to the canvas. Somehow, Koji managed to stand up and make it to the ropes. The ref counted slowly, giving Koji time to recover. Gonzalez came right back at him, throwing combos to the body and head. The referee stepped in, apparently to stop the fight, while Koji staggered along the ropes, barely able to stand. Gonzalez celebrated, thinking he had won, but the ref hadn't stopped the fight. He simply put it on hold for 30 seconds. Koji's trainer continued to hold him up in the corner, even after the referee allowed the fight to continue. Unbelievably, there were 20 seconds remaining on the clock when the referee stepped in front of the hometown hero, Koji, and stopped the round, again allowing Koji to recover. By the seventh round, the champion, Koji, had recovered enough to begin an attack which would finally end the fight. In his face. Koji's celebration in front of his delirious countrymen was short-lived as the fight quickly created worldwide controversy. Now, three months later, in a neutral site, Juan Koji and Edgar Gonzalez will fight again. That was an incredible scene, so the stage is set for the rematch between Juan Koji and Edgar Gonzalez. Tonight, we seek the answers to these two questions. Did some questionable officiating save Koji from losing his title? And is the two-time champion as good as his impressive record? Juan Koji, one of those fighters who is highly respected in the boxing community, yet little known here in the United States. Ferdy, is this the kind of fight that will prove just how good Juan Koji is? I think he w it does prove how good he is. He's, he's already accepted off his record. That was the most remarkable fight. I don't think I've ever seen anything as... as um, crazy is that uh, in all the years I've been in boxing and I think Koji needs to wipe the slate clean come out here and look good against Gonzalez if he can Gonzalez could very well come out here and clean his clock like he did that first round and he should have been the champion so this is a must fight for both of them and it's only fair that they came right back and had to fight because in any way you look at it Gonzalez got jobbed out of uh, out of his title in fact the referee was banned for life Bobby, how will Edgar Gonzalez fight the rematch, considering he almost stopped Koji in the first fight? Well, after watching what we just saw, I think it's obvious that Koji had, was given a gift. He's going to have to watch that big right hand. Gonzalez is going to be looking to throw it. That's how he got him in trouble. That's how he hurt him. That's how he practically killed him in that corner. But what he has to do is not unload all those punches so heavy. What he probably did was punch himself out a little bit, and as the fight wore on, and Koji regained himself, he beat him to the punch with combinations. He's got to watch himself, pace himself, so that late in the fight, he can still unload the bombs. Koji, a three-and-a-half-to-one favorite, incidentally. What will the effect be on Gonzalez arriving late yesterday because he had some visa problems? He had to fly through several time zones. I don't know if his biological clock can ever get back together in such a short time. The amount of jet lag that is attributable to those long trips, his body may not be able to get back on track to where he's trained it. I would never do it. Hopefully for him, he'll have no problems and he'll 
be bright and perky and ready to fly. Uh, this is not the type of thing that I would take a chance with, though. I think it could be really detrimental. All right, uh, we'll just put you next to Ferdy on the plane when you have a long flight like that. You'll never sleep. <laughs> Let's take our first look at the challenger, 29-year-old Eder Gonzalez of Columbia, South America. Only kidding. Gonzalez, 22-4-1 with 15 knockouts. His second world title shot coming within seconds of becoming a world champion about three months ago against Juan Koji. Tonight, Gonzalez gets his chance for revenge. Gonzalez, boosted by his success in the early rounds of his first fight with Juan Koji, he feels confident that he can bring a world title home to Colombia. And let's take a look at the champion, 32-year-old Juan Koji of Argentina, his 13th world title fight, impressive record of 65-2-2 two two with 40 knockouts. Koji has won 20 consecutive fights since his last defeat, August 17th of 1990, when he lost the title to Loretto Garza. He won the crown back over Morris East in 93, and tonight makes his sixth title defense of his current reign. reaction for Juan Koji. Uh, not often you see a boxer come into a ring to the strains of chariots of fire. In any event, WBA junior welterweight champ Juan Koji, only his second appearance in the U.S., first in Las Vegas. He's fought predominantly in his native Argentina, a little bit of Japan and France. A tribute to the man's toughness, though Koji has never been knocked out in 69 bouts. Let's see how they stack up on paper now as we go to the tail of the tape. Koji is 32, Gonzalez 29, two veterans. Koji 5'7", Gonzalez 5'8", the weight even at 140, the slight reach advantage for Gonzalez. And to the WBA rules for this championship bout, 10-point must system, three judges scoring the fight. No uh, standing eight count. The three knockdown rule is in effect. Only the referee can stop the fight. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell except in the last round. So here at the MGM Grand Garden in Las Vegas, Nevada, we're ready for the WBA Junior Welterweight Championship, the rematch of Juan Koji and Eder Gonzalez. Let's go up to our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon, Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, before our featured bout of the evening at this time, we ask you to rise for the singing of our national anthem. My pleasure to introduce to you at this time the talented Grandmosphere performer, from the MGM Grand Adventures, please welcome to the microphone, Gregory Vanderplue. Thank you. 
Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave thank you very much to gregory Vanderplu. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to the MGM Grand Garden in Las Vegas, Nevada. It is time for our rematch main event of the evening, brought to you by Don King Productions and Corona Beer, along with the world's largest hotel, casino, and theme park, the MGM Grand. This bout is sanctioned by the World Boxing Association, President Gilberto Mendoza, Supervisor Aurelio Fiengo, along with the Nevada State Athletic Commission, Chairman Dr. Elias Ghanem, Commissioners Nat Karasali, Bruce Lane, Luther Mack, and Dr. James Nave. The Executive Director, Mark Ratner. Physicians at ringside, Dr. James Game, Dr. Robert Voy, Dr. Al Capanna. Timekeepers at the bell also keeping count of the knockdowns. We have Al Bicek and Jane Broadfoot. Introducing to you the judges at ringside, Art Lurie, Dave Moretti, and Jerry Ruff. All right, fans, here we go with the WBA Junior Welterweight Championship of the World. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, it's showtime! The main event of the evening scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing. Introducing to you the referee in charge of this main event, Richard Steele. Presenting to you first, ladies and gentlemen, the challenger on my left, fighting out of the blue corner. He is wearing green trunks with white trim and hailing from Turbo, Colombia. He weighed in at an even 140 pounds, and his record includes 22 wins, four losses, one draw, with 15 wins coming by way of knockout. He is currently ranked the WBA number five junior welterweight in the world. Please welcome the challenger, Eder Gonzalez. And his opponent across the ring is the defending champion on my right, fighting out of the red corner in this rematch main event. He is wearing white trunks with light blue trim and fighting out of Branson, Argentina. He weighed in the same weight of an even 140 pounds, and his outstanding veteran record includes 65 wins, only two losses, two draws, with 40 big wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, making his 10th defense of his title, please welcome the two-time WBA Junior Welterweight Champion of the World, introducing Juan Martin Corchi. Richard Steele. Okay, let's go. Okay, I spoke to both fighters in the dressing room. I'm cautioning them again. Obey my commands at all times. Shake hands, good luck. Uh, 
the thing that immediately comes to mind, how fitting coming up the controversial first fight between Koji and Gonzalez that Richard Steele would be the third man of the ring. Controversy always seems to follow Steele around. Here's Edgar Gonzalez, who employs a counterpuncher style. As you look at the, the man with hands on hips, the referee, Richard Steele. Gonzalez, best weapon, the overhand right. Koji, a southpaw, describes himself as a puncher with maturity, feels his best weapon is the... Uh, combination. He says he does not remember anything about that second round of the first fight with uh, Gonzalez, but he did admit Edder's a hard puncher. He's dangerous. I cannot repeat the same mistakes. I got to be more careful. Koji admitted he was hurt by Gonzalez and will approach him with caution. Well, right now, they seem to be showing each other an awful lot of respect, giving each other a little distance. No one wants to get too close just yet, but I'm sure this will heat up if it's anything like what that first fight was. See time after time with left handers, their feet are getting very close together. And these are two thin but rangy guys, and they'll be tangling feet before this is all over. And the word he didn't remember being hurt is an understatement. He wasn't hurt, he was unconscious. I mean, he, he didn't know where he was. He was being held up by his uh, trainer in the corner. That was just purely a savagery. See how their legs got tangled up just then? I heard that the referee for that fight was banned for life. Yes, we uh, mentioned that. Tremendous action, though. Look, he's holding, he's holding and hitting, isn't he? He's holding him in the back of the head and still said nothing. Juan Koji getting away with murder. Here we go again, boys. <laughs> we haven't even started already. There was a little outrage there. Another story, the visa problems. Gonzalez coming in from Madrid, Spain, arriving in Las Vegas last night at 9. He was in the air 20 hours or so. He weighed in at 10 p.m. And had to take a blood test after that. He didn't get in bed until 12.30, he told me. I just went back to see him in the dressing room. He looked like he was sleeping in the dressing room. For a split second just a minute ago, Gonzalez switched to southpaw, didn't throw any punches, and went right back to being orthodox. This is going to be a wild one, I think. There was that right hand, the same wild right hand that he threw. to his corner for a little advice, but he's not out as badly as he was last time. No, but he's not He's not ready. He's, he's been rocked. He has been rocked. He's right for a knockout. He's got 50 seconds to survive round one. And that was that same looping right hand that got him in trouble before. Gonzalez looking for justice. Gonzalez can't do here is what he did in the first fight, and then punch himself out, trying to get the champion out. And right now, it looks like Koji's got his feet under him a little better. His eyes look clear. This fight's going to last through this round, I think, right now. Gonzalez, who has to be fatigued, exhausted after that long flight, but ridden nine hours ahead of Las Vegas, but he says he's in great shape. And obviously at least psychologically, extremely upset and angry, and he might be just going on sheer adrenaline here. He's that big right hand, and that's, that's going to be key for this fight. Boy, that went through seven time zones alone to get there. That's a long right hand, and a butt, and a butt. Wild first round. No te quedes tan parado, Juan, cuando ahí está magando con esa caminada para el lado de la derecha de él. Wow, All right, here's a knockdown, and here's a, that long, long right hand that got him in trouble in the first fight. There it is again, right on the button. In the corner, they're saying, don't stand straight, straight up. You're standing straight up. Walk to his right. Walk to his right. And Koji's saying, I'm all right. I, I feel all right. He just caught me. Now, we'll see the headbutt right before the end of the round. They kind of just ran into each other, bang, right in the mouth. Not a bad area for either fighter. Top of the head for one, mouth for the other. Not something that should be a factor. Yeah, except if that goes to the, uh, to the eye, it's Koji is going to come out bleeding. Koji took seven bouts in 93, the toughest of the seven with Colombian-born Gonzalez. Luis Spada, his advisor, says Koji was lucky. Well, Gonzalez really looking to set the record straight. But a grazing blow, and Koji comes right back. Oh, that one landed nicely by Gonzalez. You'll wonder what would happen if the man came back with a left hook and threw a combination. It's incredible how he just counts on that one shot. But a game Koji is fighting. And it's incredible how it lands all the time. It seems like such a sloppy punch, you should be able to block it, yet he's getting hit with it. Koji is getting hit by that right hand. Koji knocked down, flat on his back. It was a flash knockdown, almost a minute left in the first round. This is round two, scheduled for 12. The WBA Junior Waterway Championship. Their legs tangling up almost in every encounter that they come in. 
Fighting a southpaw is always a lot of trouble for orthodox fighters. We're not used to seeing them too often. They're used to training with orthodox fighters all the time, so it's not as difficult for them to adjust. Oh, boy, this is really hard fighting. I mean, Gonzalez wants revenge. This guy's throwing bombs to the body, and Koji's throwing as hard as he can every time he gets in close. It's a nice body shot right there by Koji. Gonzalez tried to rip an uppercut in. I believe in the first fight it was the uppercut that started all the problems for him, but it, nonetheless, it was the right hand. Koji, 69 fights in a world champion on and off since 1987. He's 32. He's fought almost exclusively in his home country. Koji looks perplexed by the style. Oh, good right hand by Gonzalez. You would think that Koji would probably just try and key that right hand so much more, but he's getting hit with one after another. There again. again. Koji is rocked again. It's almost as if he doesn't know how to put his glove up. Good right hand by Gonzalez pushing Koji back. I got news for you, this right hand's going through, right through a couple of those gloves. Koji just looks confused and perplexed. Gonzalez just keeps pressing the attack. Koji's certainly an able champion, somebody who's got a lot of experience, especially in distance fights. He knows he's got a lot of time here to come back, and if Gonzalez doesn't be careful, he may punch himself out because he has so much power in each shot that he'll eventually tire him. Well, he may lose his title for the second time. Combination by Koji, but not much effect on the challenger. Plus, we'll have to see the effect of going through all those time zones. As we know, that's a very debilitating thing, and he may be have, they've sent him out to do everything he can in the early rounds, knowing he's going to fade in the last round. Yeah. The longer this fight goes, the advantage grows. Oh, for Koji, but that's a slip. No, he just they got tangled up, and he just kind of shoved them off. Yeah, their, their feet are just getting tangled all of them. I mean, it's just a mess here because they're so long-legged, both of them. Final seconds of round two. Koji uh, can only hope that Gonzalez has spent himself physically. In agreement that he's got to hold his hand up. They're all saying, hold your hand up. Don't get hit by the right hand. Here's the sequence that we see this right hand fighting home. There it is. It's right there. And all night long, the right hand is landing. Fred, it's no secret. He's going to throw it. He's going to look for that right hand. Boom. He keeps trying to push it out there. That's what he's looking to get home. Now we'll see a slip that is purely that. A it's slip. actually more of a push. Yeah, the, 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 this is, a, look at his legs. See the legs? Yeah, they kind of just pushed him off. A little tangled up, nothing major. Safe on first base. All right, that, what the last thing they told uh, Koji is, don't forget the jab. You're letting this guy come in without jabbing him. So let's see if he picks up the jab and holds up his hands so he doesn't get that right uh, hand come looping forward. Strange, strange punch, but boy, what damage it's done today. Round three, Koji knocked down with almost a minute to go in the first round. Got up quickly, though. Gonzalez, though, having his way, and again. Again, another counter right hand. He's looking to key that right Whoa. hand. It certainly got the champion's attention. Oh, anytime he throws it, it's just like, there's three complete misses that look like you can get tired from throwing. Koji again holding it, hitting it, and still there, got there, there you go, that's the butt that was gonna cut his eye, and it's cut. There it is, a lot of blood over the left eye now of Juan Koji, the champion. That was that right hand that he countered with, and it pinched his eye. Sometimes you pinch the eyelid against your bone, boom, it busted open. Now we said if one of them is going to get cut, it's going to be Koji, the way they're button heads and the way he's getting hit by a right hand. And Koji with a real sense oh, of, oh, he got out. Trouble. And Gonzalez was hurt with that left uppercut. Staggering, couldn't get his feet under him, and Koji hesitated for a second. And here again, you got that holding and hitting. Uh, interesting tactic. And Koji going in, looking for a finish here. because Gonzalez is on Queer Street. He doesn't really know where he's at. No. He's getting hit. He's just winding up now, Koji, and going for the kill. Right hand that stagger. Gonzalez, who's in trouble. Pressed up against the ropes. Down he goes again. And the towel gets thrown in from the Gonzalez corner. Richard Steele, meanwhile, disregarding it and sends Koji to the neutral corner. Here's another confusion. You cannot stop the fight with a towel. This is an Argentine.
Argentina. This can't happen, and, but the referee is stopping. And yes, indeed, it is all over as Richard Steele concurs with the Gonzalez corner, and Koji retains his title. You know, you might think that they knew he only had a little bit of time. The rest, the jet lag, and maybe a number of other things that factor in, but they weren't going to even take a chance. I think his corner should have let him try to last the round because the cut was terrible. If he got himself back together, could be champion. This is in Argentina. It's the U.S., and that towel has no significance. And let me tell you, he came very close to getting disqualified because Koji's corner came in to dispute the towel. If you come in the ring, you're disqualified. So, therefore, another one of those crazy nights with overheated uh, tempers on the part of both corners and not using their head and letting the official take over. Fortunately, Richard Steele took over and did the right thing. So Juan Koji with a dramatic sense of urgency after that terrible cut over the eye, able to put Gonzalez away. Round number three. Strong finish for the champion who retains his belt. And now goes to 66 2 and 2 with 40 knockouts. I don't know about you guys, but I've had my fill of controversy. <laughs> well, it almost, this, this kid came in here so enraged. He wanted to get his thing and almost did it with that big punch. And then that continuous right hand, Gonzalez, he just looked like he was in the zone where he was going to get his title that they stole from him. And yet, Koji, being the champion that he is, fought back through adversity. Bobby, that's adversity. Well, I'll tell you, I see him at 140 pounds. If I'm taking Julio Cesar Chavez against Koji, Chavez goes through him in a big way. Juan Koji, who is put to the canvas with almost a minute remaining in the first round, comes back in the third to put Gonzalez away. Now, was it a headbutt or a punch well, that caused the cut? Let's take a look at it in slow motion. Keep, keep your hand on, on the right hand. That's right on the eye, no question about it. Yeah, no question about it. Bobby. Right eye, pinched his, pinched his skin right up against the eye bone, and that's what caused it. It was a good right hand. It was the first punch he threw of the round. But like I said, if he could have lasted, that cut was looking very bad. Yeah, there was no butt there at all. He wasn't anywhere close to being butted. That was the pure right hand punch. No, it was a right hand. Let's take a look at that first knockdown, which came because of, a, of the a sharp exchange underneath. Uh, he, he got in trouble with an uppercut, and then all of a sudden, there. Then all of a sudden, no, that wasn't the one before that. There was one caught. before that that yeah. backed him up, but yeah. he yeah. followed through with that rising left hand as well. I mean, and it, it, it was the uppercuts that started all this, and he was not able to clear his head. Could be just, he just doesn't have a great chin of recuperative powers, or it could be a combination of that, that jet lag in a terrible time zone. Uh, here's the second one. By this time, Koji knows all he's got to do is press. He's fresh. The other guy's completely worn out and not even conscious. He's just standing there. All of this could have been avoided. He's and out. a mark of inexperience, Gonzalez tries to fight back while he's hurt. He should just hold on. Hold on, take a walk, make the referee break him, move, hold on some more. Don't try and fight back out of pride or any other reason. Something that took me a long time to learn. I, I, I don't think he, he was even conscious during all of that time. I think he was out on his feet and he just couldn't do anything but accept the punches. And Koji, hey, is an experienced and very good champion. Well, in an unusual display of sportsmanship, they gave Gonzalez an immediate rematch, but Koji prevails. Let's get the official time from our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon, Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of two minutes, one second. In round number three, the referee in charge, Richard Steele, stops the contest. Winner by way of technical knockout and still champion, Juan Martin Koji. So Juan Koji who comes a long way from uh, Branson, Argentina to retain his WBA Junior Welterweight Championship and lifting his record to 66, two and two with uh, 40 knockouts, a dramatic victory over Eder Gonzalez, uh, rated number six by the WBA who came all the way from terrible uh, Colombia and arrived here in Las Vegas uh, just last night at around 9 p.m. after a 20 hour flight. Although Gonzalez put Koji uh, down to the canvas late in the first round. It was uh, Koji who turned the tables, Bobby, and took care of business in round three. Well, you know, again, we talk about it a lot, that time zone, the travel, that last minute, all the lack of rest he probably had. We don't know what effect that had. It appeared as if he was coming out for the knockout early. Maybe that was the reason, maybe not. Either way, 
you know, he fought a valiant fight for as long as it went, but Koji, again, experienced, and he knew he'd catch up with Gonzalez, and did. Well, you said he didn't remember anything about the second round of their first bout. I think uh, he'll remember the third round of their second bout. I think so. So here at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, we are set for post-fight interviews. Let's go up to the ring of the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco. All right, Koji. And, and, uh, Koji insisting on giving a big hug to uh, Gonzalez. Gonzalez here, who fought a, a great fight. Que sorpresa la primera derecha. ¿Tú creías que iba a pasar otra vez como te pasó en Argentina? Es que está acostumbrado a darnos buenos sustos de vez en cuando. I asked him if he was surprised to get that big right hand and a repeat of what was happening in Argentina. He said, this guy's always surprising me, always hurting me. ¿Tú creías que tenía el título ganado cuando tumbaste a, a Coach en el primer asalto? Hombre, sí, de verdad. Pensé que de verdad estaba, estaba ganado ya. Pero tú sabes que el boxeo así es sorpresa. A veces uno está bien, se recupera y puede ganar la pelea por cabo. Yeah, he, I asked him if he thought he had the title one with that knockdown. He said he thought he was right there, he's going to do it. But he knew Koji can get strong, and he knew he can get back, so he was trying to knock him out as hard as he could in the second round. But Koji came back and knocked him out. Go, the, el, este es el último asalto. Vamos a ver cómo ganó. Ven, ven, si quieres ver el último asalto. Este es la cortada por un golpe. Espera, sí, sí, fíjate, fíjate, fíjate el golpe de, derecho. All right. Ese es el golpe que te cortó. Te corta. Un golpe. That's, that's, his manager said, that's where you lost the fight. As soon as Koji saw the blood, that's where you lost the fight, because Koji got in gear. Uh, they have, uh, both of them nodded and said, that was the right hand. That's what cut me. And his manager said, yeah, that's where the end of the fight started. Okay, aquí la primera, la primera vez que este guy. All right. They're both looking at it. Be fixed. Well, here you go. Dime lo que tú ves. Sí, la mano que la mano que lo siente ayer también es un que izquierda anterior a ese cuando se queda conmovido. He said that the real punch was before that, before he got in trouble, and that's the one that put him in trouble. Usted el vio el el punch ese que que te lastimó. Hombre, sí, de verdad, uno sabe cuando uno está en buenas condiciones uno mira a todo, ¿no? Eh, bueno, pero bueno, me le tocó ahora la de ganar. Yeah, I said, did you see that punch coming? He said, I saw it coming, but I couldn't do anything about it. And afterwards, I didn't remember what was going on. El, la segunda vez, ¿tú te acordaste? ¿Te, te sabes lo que está, está pasando la segunda, el segundo knockdown? Hombre, sí, de verdad que uno cuando está en condiciones, uno, uno mira y uno siente en el ring, ¿no? Pero tú sabes que ah, el otro no es mocho, tiene su mano y pues recibió una mano de Koji y fue la que me puso. I asked him if he can remember that second day, knockdown, he said barely, because Koji is a great champion and when he gets you in trouble, he finishes big and he finished me off and I have no excuse for that, he just did what he had to do. En la cortada, te, te hizo pelear más fuerte. Sí, me enojé, me enojé porque cuando me sentí en la cara, eh, tenía miedo que me pare una pelea, entonces salía a jugarme el todo por el todo, matar o morir el milema, así que... I asked him... Did that cut spur him to this great action? He said, yeah, it was going to be do or die because I wasn't going to let them stop the fight on a cut and I wasn't going to lose my championship on a cut, so I had to finish him off, and that's what he did. He finished him off completely, and uh, both fighters uh, with a big hug and affection, and we go back to uh, Steve Albert at ringside. Thank you very much, uh, Ferdy. Well, it didn't last long, but it was memorable. We're going to take uh, uh, another look at that last round, the third round that ended it as Juan Koji knocks out Edher Gonzalez in the rematch. And here it is, Bobby, electrifying start, electrifying finish. It's going to be a long flight back for Edher Gonzalez, but at least this time he'll have more time to reflect and sleep. Well, he got his money's worth. He got two shots at it. Uh, obviously, the first time it looked as if he was jobbed. It looked as if tremendous incompetence cost him a world championship and cost him a little piece of history. And that's sad, but today he came to do what he had to, and the long trip could have been a factor, we don't know. He came out winging, he looked to win this world championship and looked to do it early. But again, Koji wanted to take him a little more time, did what he had to do, and here in the third round. It was that right hand that uh, inflicted the wound over the left eye. You see uh, Juan Koji trying to brush it away with his left uh, glove. And here, the sense of urgency, you could, you could really see it stirring up. Well, there's a left uppercut coming a little while later on in the round, and, and that's what starts it and basically is the beginning of the end. Somewhere in here, there's an, you know, he's throwing, there's the uppercut that does it. He was throwing him, he was throwing him, but, you know, he kept holding him behind the head, too, when we said that Richard Steele didn't mention it that much. 
Uh, not at all, actually. And that uppercut, though, was what started it. Koji was not able to recuperate his resilience, not what he needs to be for a champion. Gonzalez just squinting out of the right. And there's that left hand. That, that puts him on the canvas. So with about a minute 40 to go, Gonzalez wobbled, staggered, rocked. And you can see in his eyes, he's not clear. His feet aren't out in the room. He is not strong. He's not anything but in trouble. And he won't hold on. He's trying to swing back. And, you know, that's admirable, but not bright in this situation. And there's a big right hook that just about does it. He falls forward trying to hold on. The corner throws in the towel, which we can't see just now. But Richard Steele, again, he's the referee in the United States and Nevada. He gets to stop the fight. And he's uh, imploring Koji to get into that uh, neutral corner. And that is it. Even though you can see Gonzalez shaking his head affirmatively that he's okay, but obviously he was not. And with blood streaking from the eye of Juan Koji, Luis Spada's advisor, and all of his handlers embrace the champion, 